What's up guys, I'm Abby. Welcome back to Abby's Digital Nook. I decided to make this video to jump on the back of my previous video where I, got, I talked to you guys about all the things I didn't like about the Kindle and all the things I didn't like about the Kobo. And then also slightly addressed everything that's happening with um, Kindle and the digital rights and um, basically taking away the ability for you to download your content directly from the Amazon website. So I wanted to make this video so that you guys understand that although they're taking away the downloadability from their website, you can still download your files and get your physical files. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do it in this video. So all you need to do is plug in your Kindle into your computer. There's a couple different apps that you can get. Amazon has actually made their own app for this purpose and the app is called USB File Manager. And what this does is allows you to access the root files on your Kindle and you can then drag and drop those files onto your computer. It's actually something that's always been available directly via USB, specifically through the newer models and I believe the option is still available in the older models as well, but I cannot speak for those as I do not have an older model. I have a newer model. I have never had the ability to download my books via USB on from the Amazon website. That's never been an option for me because they took that option away already for the newer models. That's something that was only available for people who had older models. So even though it said click this to download your book to via and transfer via USB, it actually didn't work. It said you don't have any eligible devices to do this on, despite the fact that I have two Kindles, two Kindle Basics in Matcha on my account. So um, Amazon already took that feature away for any of the most recent um, models that have Wi-Fi. So again, that's never been an option for me. However, I am a stickler for making sure I have my files backed up. I'm a, I'm a motion graphics designer and we work with files all day, every day, and it's extremely important that we have all of our files backed up, backed up, backed up, because you never know what's gonna happen. So I always have a backup and then I have a backup of a backup. And that's just something that I've always had ingrained in me for a very long time. So immediately when I got my Kindle, I downloaded every single book to my device and then I transferred all of those books off of my device onto my external hard drive. And I did this from day one and anytime I get new books, I continue to do this so that I have a copy of that file. So the file format is in a Kindle file format and that is called AZW3 or KFX or um, something on the lines of a file format that doesn't exist in, outside of the Amazon scope. So you're gonna get your file in a weird format that cannot be read on anything other than a Kindle. However, once you have that file, you can transfer that file across your Kindle devices. And so you have it, you have that copy. And, and you can take that file and you can convert it into other file formats like EPUB, PDF, Mobi, whatever you want. There are apps out there that will allow you to convert your file. However, this is not a legal process. For legal reasons, I'm not telling you to strip the DRM off of your Kindle books and convert them into PDFs or EPUBs or anything of the sort because it's not legal. However, if you have a Kindle book and you want it backed up, do what you gotta do to make sure you have your files. That's all I'm gonna say about that. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is how to get those files from your Kindle and put them on your computer. Now, Amazon's app that they made is called USB File Manager. This app allows you to access the root files of your Kindle. You can see those files and drag them onto your desktop and put them or drag them onto a hard drive. And um, you can use Amazon's app, but if you don't wanna support Amazon at all anymore and you're just like, I just want my files, then um, you can use a different app that allows you to do that. And that's an, an alternative app that is almost identical. In fact, it's the exact same app, the exact same build. Everything about the app is exactly the same except for the logo. And that is Android File Transfer, which is an app that you can get directly from the Android website. And that allows you to access your Kindle too. It opens up the Kindle, opens up the root file of the Kindle, and you can ac access that file and grab all your files. 
grab all your books. The third method, which is the one I prefer to use mostly, which is Calibre. Everyone who has um, a lot of different types of books usually uses Calibre to organize their books because you know, your file library can get really big. So Calibre is another way for you to access the root file of your Kindle and just transfer the files onto your computer and then you have it backed up. So um, despite this feature, uh, like being eliminated for all users now and not just the newer Kindle users, um, you can still get your files. So um, yeah, let's let me show you how to grab them. Let's go. Okay, so once you've plugged in your Kindle, um, the first thing that's going to pop up is the Android file transfer app. That's what pops up first for me anytime I plug it in because it is um, just like automatically detects it. So Android file transfer always pops up, but I don't necessarily use it that much, but you can access your file. So as you can see, all my books that I have downloaded to my Kindle are inside of the documents folder. So all you have to do is just go into your documents folder and there you can see the A z w3 or whatever it's called azw3 books and just move those files onto your computer it's as simple as that now i don't really mess with it in the file structure because i like to keep everything that i have in caliber i like to like see pictures and i like to put other information in there and more detail so i prefer using caliber but this is the very easy method this is also going to be the fastest method if you just want your files and you're not thinking about how you're going to organize them or making sure everything stays in the correct file structure for transferring to the next Kindle, then yeah, you just go in here and just drag the files over. However, I, like I said, I need my files to be organized. And if I'm going to keep moving these files from Kindle to Kindle, they need to stay in the same structure that it is in the current Kindle. So I don't like messing with the root file. But again, like I said, if the purpose is just to back up your files, which is what the biggest complaint that's been happening now is, then literally just copy this whole folder to your desktop and you've got it. Kindle has made two separate apps, one of them being sent to Kindle, which is how you can send files to your device directly on your computer, or you can just go on the Kindle website and do it if you have a newer Kindle. If you have an older Kindle, I don't think this will work. But then you've got Kindle USB File Manager, which essentially is the exact same thing as Android File Transfer. They're this exact same app. One is just made by Kindle, one's made by Android. But if I open that up, with my Kindle connected, it's going to give me the same file structure, same file format as what Android just gave me. And I can pretty much see everything on here. I'll show you guys if I open up documents. It has all my books. All my books, again, in AZW3 format. So they're there. You can get your files. But like I said, they are DRM protected. So you have to do whatever you got to do to strip the DRM and convert it into a different format like EPUB and yeah so I just wanted to make sure you guys understood you can get your files your files are not like missing they're not hidden from you yes Android uh, um, Kindle can go in there and take um, your access online to re-download the file so like let's say you've downloaded a file from their website and um, put it on your kindle and then the, let's say like for example let's say before the coffee gets cold this one suddenly becomes unavailable permanently then they can just go in and remove it from the amazon store and then you won't be able to re-download it to your device but if you've got this file backed up on your computer even if it's an azw3 you have it backed up. So now that you have that file, you can do whatever method you gotta do to convert it to a Mobi, convert it to an EPUB, convert it to a PDF, but you have it. So all that document storage is here. It's inside of your Kindle, you have it. So you have more power than you think, I'm just saying. All right, so here is an example. This is my Calibre library and I've got anything that has a green check mark on it means that it's currently on my Kindle. It's not just in my Calibre library. So here's the book. So if I go, here's the book. It's How I Met My Soulmate Volume 4 Unknown KFX zip file. This is in a document format. I have no access to this book other than to drop it onto another Kindle with a different Kindle device. I cannot drop it onto my Kobo. I cannot drop it onto my iPad because it's in a KFX slash zip file. That has to be converted into a EPUB um, using Calibre 
or using a th another third party app. There's actually four or five different apps that will allow you to ship the DRM and transfer, but Calibre is the most popular. Um, you need a bunch of plugins and I'm not going to show you guys how to do that. You have to research it for yourself because it's definitely not a legal method. So you have to do that on your own. Um, but this grabbing your file from your device is legal. It's fine. And Kindle even has the file manager that allows you to literally grab your file. So you can back up your files. It is not something that you're not able to do anymore. You can still do it. But again, you're backing them up knowing that you can only read it on a Kindle. You can't read it on other devices. You have to convert it if you want on another device. So I just wanted to show that to you guys so you guys can understand um, that your files are accessible still, okay? For example, here is a book that is in my Kindle library and is also in my Calibre. This book I have as an AZW3 and I have also an EPUB version of it. So I have two backup versions of it. So if I navigate right now, I can go to open book folder and it's going to take me to the folder where it's stored on my hard drive. And here is the Kindle version and I have the EPUB version now. And I can do whatever the hell I want with this EPUB version. So yeah. This is a note to you to back up your books. All right, so that was how to grab all your Kindle files. So if you guys have not backed up your files, do it now. I, I mean, you could do it tomorrow, you could do it next week, it doesn't make a difference because you can, you're gonna be able to download it anyway. They're on your device. So just, you know, if you're worried about Amazon coming and taking your files, which is very unlikely to happen, however, it has happened in the past, if you're worried about Amazon taking your books away or like worried about them coming into your device and taking your books away, then, you know, um, download your files and do what you got to do to convert them so that you have another copy of it. So in the previous video, I'd mentioned that movies, TV shows, all that kind of stuff that you have to access an app to use it or consume that content, then it's a license. What I was referring to is any movies, TV shows, music that you have purchased. I am not referencing Netflix. I'm not talking about Spotify. I'm not talking about Hulu or, you know, any app that is a subscription-based model. That is a totally different model and completely different to this situation. This situation pertains to purchased items that you have clicked a button that says purchase, and then you have a file that is inside of an app that you can access. So that is like textbooks that you might have purchased from Amazon, digital textbooks, digital books, digital movies, digital TV shows directly from um, Amazon's video app. Um, you know, any digital product that you have purchased, not purchased a subscription to access it all day. I'm talking about a specific item. So if I go in there and I want to buy Ali Hazelwood's book, Love Hypothesis, I've purchased the Love Hypothesis. However, I've purchased, I've technically purchased a license to access Ali Hazelwood's The Love Hypothesis for the eternity of time or until Jeff Bezos or whatever company decides they don't want me to read it anymore. That is what I've purchased. I've not purchased the physical book that I have forever to keep in my my hands and no one can touch it because digital products just don't work the same way as physical products they have more ability to do what they want with it i mentioned this in the comments as well this is something that is across the board i know you guys are anti-amazon and i don't blame you at all however this is not an amazon thing okay it's just in the news and in the hype because amazon's very popular but amazon does this Barnes & Noble does this with their uh, with their Nook. Um, Kobo does this with their Kobo. You cannot download your Kobo books to, with a file and do what you want with the file that you want to do. The same way you want to do it with Amazon, you can't do it with Kobo. You can't do it with the Nook. You can't do it with the Kobo. Like your files are native to that device, native to that company, native to that ecosystem. That is just how the companies are working these days. It sucks. It sucks. It's terrible. However, that is the case. It, and Amazon has always been providing us with a license to their digital content since they opened their ebook store 
in 2007. This is not a new revelation. It just wasn't obvious to us. We didn't see it. We didn't look in the terms and conditions and notice that we're buying a license. We just thought, oh yay, I have my books and I can do what I want. No, we don't have the access to do that. So um, I just wanted to reiterate that to you guys. It has been in the fine print. And in the last video, I told you guys, like I found out this information around 2000. And 13 is when I was purchasing movies for my daughter, like kid movies. I was purchasing Frozen, I was purchasing Moana. Like those movies I bought on Amazon, Amazon Video. I purchased those through Amazon Video at the time. It was called, well, it's Amazon Prime Video now. But I purchased them through that and I have those digital copies and a whole bunch of Barbie movies as well because she loved Barbie. But I had all those movies and I still have them, but they're only available for me to access if I go on Amazon's Prime Video app. I can't download those movies, even though I paid like $35 for those movies. I can't do anything with those movies on my laptop. I have to only access it through Amazon's Prime Video app, whether it's on my, whether it's on my laptop or on my phone or on my wherever. They, if they want to take that movie away from me, they can do that. They can take the movie away and say, oh, we don't want anyone to see this movie ever again. And they can take it off their website and it's gone from my files. On the app, it's gone from my purchases in the Amazon account. It's been that way. Unfortunately, it has been that way since they created their digital ecosystem from the beginning. You may not have known about it, but it has been that way. It has been in the fine print, in their terms and conditions. We just didn't know about it. Okay, so I just want to make sure that you guys understand it. I'm like trying to be as insightful as I can based off of the knowledge that I have researched. You can find this information yourself. So I understand that I'm telling you this, but you can just look it up for yourself and see when, just ask these questions. When did Amazon create Kindle books? Look that up. It will, that will tell you it was in 2007. Did it say in the terms and conditions that the Kindle books were purchased or were they, were they uh, licensed? it will tell you they were considered a digital rights license from the beginning when they first opened up their ebooks. I was says in 2007. Was it clear in the fine print in the beginning? No. Did they just change their terminology this month to say that the Kindle books are actually considered licensed? Yes, that just happened. They just changed their terminology. But the the core message is the same. They just change the words so that you guys understand that it's a license because it wasn't clear to everyone who was purchasing. So um, yeah, it was from the beginning, always a license. Um, so all that being said, my main core message here, guys, is to download your files. I've just shown you guys three different ways to download your files. You will then have a3, AZW3 book, A, you will then have AZW3 format or um, KFX or um, some type of Kindle file format. And then, like I said, do what you will with that file format um, to make sure you have yourself backed up and secure. Okay, so hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. And if it was, please go ahead, and give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're brand new to my channel. Go ahead and grab all your books and back them up, back them up, back them up. If you want to move to another device, go ahead and do that. But like I said, you've got to convert all those Kindle books into something else to access on another device because the other device is going to have their own ecosystem and their own rules and things and stuff. So yeah, good luck with everything. Happy reading. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.